It is such a very wonderful moment that we have today and I believe that I do find you well and uh, we are going through the lesson that we have for today and before we do that uh, it, will, uh, it will be good that we first go for a word of prayer then after that we will um, proceed with the lesson. Our kind loving Father this morning, Lord we are so thankful for the gift of life. We pray Lord that you might be with us, guide us as we will be going through the lesson and we ask everything trusting that you hear and uh, what you have not asked we hope to receive in Christ's name. Amen. When we look at the lesson that we covered uh, last Sabbath, we were looking at the time of Jacob's trouble and we had such a opening remarks from the book of Jeremiah 30 verse 7 which reads, Alas, for that day is great. For that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trap, but he shall be saved out of it. That's a very wonderful thing that we get in there. That though the time will be such a very troublous one, but at the end, he was saved out of it. So it is also the same as in the time of the end. As in this period that we have, we are living in the time of probation, in which whatsoever that we are doing, Whatsoever that we do, everything is put on record. And there is going to come a time when uh, the probation will have ended and everything will have been decided. So we have got this opportunity that we should re be reconciled with God. And if we do that, by the time of the end, we will be ready. And to God's people, even if they will go through this kind of a time that is going to be so terrible, but at the end, they are going to be saved. So may it be your wish and prayer that you will be found on the safe side, not to be found wanting. And this moment that we have, 
we have to do everything with all our might before that day cometh when we won't have any strength. When Christ is still in the most holy place, this is the time that we should use it wisely, when he is still our mediator. And we looked at that, uh, the judgment, it starts in the house of God. So as it starts in the house of God, maybe your name will be called tomorrow, maybe your name will be called the day after. If your name is called, what is going to be decided out of it? So that's the lesson that we covered uh, last Sabbath. And today, we will be going through the new lesson in, the, in which the title is Reformation in the Home. Reformation in the Home. What a very nice title. And we have got um, the opening remarks from the book of Genesis chapter 35, verse 2, which says that, Then Jacob said unto his household, and to all that were with him, put away the strange gods that are among you, and begin and change your garments. Why would Jacob say this? What exactly happened? So this is what we are going to be looking at. And the spirit of prophecy here we read in the Adventist home page 163, it says that God will behave parents, act as rational beings, and believe in such a manner that each child may be properly educated. So the question is, are your, are your kids properly educated? Do you take time to educate your children? Because when we educate, we are looking at that you educate each and every day. The way you live your life, the way you hang yourself as a mother, the way you hang yourself as a father, or the way you hang yourself as a parent or a guardian, the children, they are looking to each and everything that you do. And they will find a role model or say that, I just want, when I grow up, I just want to be like my father. I just want to be like my mother. So when you look at yourself, the way you hang yourself, do you think that your children are coping a good example in you? When we look at the mind of a child, we're looking at that the mind is like a tabular riser. It's empty. It doesn't have anything. And the kids, they just take everything, whatsoever that comes, they take. We can also liken it to a sponge in which when you take a sponge, you go and dig and dip it where there is grease, it will take that. You take it and dip it in a sea water, it will take that. You take it, that sponge, or put it where there is oil or anything or acidic, it will always take that. So what is it that your children are taking from you? This is what we are going to be covering. And the first title that we have for Sunday, they were looking at the, the new area, new challenges. The a new area that comes with new challenges. So who is in this new area? Not forgetting that we are going through the life of Jacob. And then here we find that now his brother had left. Now he is finding himself, he's finding his feet in a new place. And as he's starting a new place, also there are new challenges which are coming in. And when we read from the book of Genesis 33, verse 17 to 20, we read that, And Jacob journeyed to Succoth and built him a house and made boots for his cattle. Therefore, the name of the place is called Succoth. And Jacob came to Shalem, a seat of Shechem, which is in the land of Canaan, when he came from Patnaram and pitched his tent before the city. And he goes on to say verse 19, And he bought a parcel of a field where he had spread his tent, and at the hand of the children of Hama, Sekem's father, for a hundred pieces of money, and he erected there an altar and called it Elo, Elohim Israel. So in here while looking at him, that he is in a new place, and he bought this place after that, he also erected his boats in there, and also he built an altar. Each and every time when we are looking at the life of Abraham, wherever that he lodged, he would also erect an altar. And what does it represent? So we should know about all this. And when we read from the Patriarchs of Prophets, we read that the Patriarchs prayer at Bethel that God would bring him again in peace to his own land had been granted. Now God had heard his prayers and now he was in a new place in the land that he ran away from after he had deceived his brother. But now he was back again. And when we continue further looking at um, 
what is it that we should consider observing Jacobis uh, neglect in family management as a circuit in the new area? So we're looking at that there is something that he neglected and as a result it had uh, a bent outcome. When we look at the um, verse 30, Genesis 34 verse 1, it reads that, And Dina, the daughter of Leah, which she bare unto Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. So as they were in, in this new place, she thought that it is good for her to go and meet up with new people to see the daughters of the land. When we look at it, Dina, and we're looking at the life of Jacob, how he was supposed to have hanged with his family. His family or himself wasn't supposed to go and mingle with other people out there. And we are going to find out what exactly happened after that. So after Dina went to meet up with the daughters of the land, we were looking at that. I would love to give a, a, an example. When someone goes into a river and you hear that in this river, they are crocodiles. And the person will go in there and say, I'll just swim. You might succeed and swim today and swim tomorrow. But one way or the other, you are going to where there is danger. And if a crocodile finds you, that's the place where it has got more power. And it will be able to overpower you. You won't be able to because that's where is its ground, it's its territory. So also we are looking at that dinner that she went to go and see the daughters of the land. And when we go on further looking at the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 in the Lord's Prayer, here we, let, we read that, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and power and glory, and glory forever and ever. Amen. We often say this prayer. Many people love to repeat this prayer. And when we are looking at this, a prayer says that, And lead us not into temptation. God doesn't lead us to temptation, but we are the ones who invite temptations. And when we invite temptations, it will be very hard for us to be able to conquer that, to overcome, because we would have invited it. As also I gave an example of a crocodile. If you go to a river where there is a crocodile, you won't be able to succeed to fight with a crocodile where there is its territory. So also we are looking at Dina, that's the kind of mistakes that she did. And also which is the mistake of the parent, that the parent didn't take his responsibility fully. When we read the child guidance, it has got so marvelous here. It says that, fathers and mothers, do you realize the importance of the responsibility resting on you? Do you allow your children to associate with other children? without being present to know what kind of education they are receiving. Do not allow them to be alone with other children. And when we look at the children, we often say that they are young. Let them play. Let them have their own time. Yes, it's very good to have their own time. But as a parent here, we are uh, told that we are, you are supposed to guard jealously. What kind of influence are they getting from these other children? And we are looking at that certain he works 24-7 and he works even over time. And when he sees a chance, he gets it. One seed which is negative that can be influenced to your child. It will stay with that child. One way or the other, it will come out. So in here, the parents, they are called to look after their children and each and everything that they do, the parents should know what kind of, of the children that they play with. So this is what we get in here, and when we go on further, we're looking at that here is a trial and a choice for you to run the risk of offending your neighbors by sending their children to their own home or gratify them and let them lodge with your children and thus expose them to be instructed in that knowledge which would be a lifetime case to them. So the knowledge that the children can gather from other kids it will be very hard to take it away. And that will be a lifelong case. Let's go on further and find out what happened when we look at this. The dividing of dinner. How was she divided? What happened? And we are looking that at dinner what, when she went in verse 2 on Genesis chapter 34, we say that, And when she came, the son of Hama, the Hivite, prince of the country, saw her, he took her. And lay with you and defiled her. So this is what happened. What a sad experience that she had to go to come across with, and especially to Jacob. When we read uh, 
First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. Here we read that. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. So while looking at that dinner, as she went on, yeah, uh, what is she thought is she would go just to see the daughters of the lady. But let's look at what happened. At the end, we find that she was defiled. By who? While looking at that, this is Shechem who was um, coming from the heathens. And he, he was uh, coming from this place. We find that now she was defiled. So we are looking at that. We are supposed to present ourselves blameless unto the Lord. But now dinner was already defiled. What decision did Jacob take? What happened thereafter? We are also going to look at that. That now she had been defiled. And when we look at um, the book of First Thessalonians 5 verse 22, here it says that we are to abstain from all appearance of evil. So whenever we see that if is approaching, we should always find a way to live. Not to, we should abstain each and every time. Because one way, if you do something now and you go on further, you go on further, it will be very hard for you to overcome that kind of a thing. So we are to, each and every time, abstain from all appearance of evil. There are many things which come along. There are many things which happen. There are many people, many youths, they always think that I will get this person and then I will convert this person. But we don't realize that the power of converting it comes from God himself. And there is no any other way that we ourselves can convert someone. We can throw someone unto the Lord. So when we go on faith, let's look at Tuesday, ready to pledge. What is that we have in here? How did the heathen Shechem view his obligation to dinner? When we look at Genesis 34, verse 3, 4, 6, 8, and 11, here we read that. And his soul gave unto Dina, the daughter of Jacob, and he loved the damsel, and spake kindly unto the damsel. And she came, spake unto his father, Hama, saying, Get me this damsel to wife. This is she came. When we're looking at him, that he gave unto Dina, he loved Dina. And after that, he also calls his father that his father should help him so that he should get dinner for a wife. And let's look at what his father did. In verse 6, we read that, And Hamma, the father of Shechem, went unto Jacob to commune with him. And Hamma communed with them, saying, The soul of my son Shechem longeth for your daughter. I pray you give ye him to wife. So now we are looking at the parents. If now you've got a daughter or you've got daughters, if one hidden person comes from outside there, he comes and he wants to marry your daughters, you look at the faith, your faith is different from them. What is it that we do? What is it that we teach our children? And how would we handle this kind of a situation? You are looking at yourself, you have groomed up your child in a way of that she is a Christian and you know that she's a believer, you are a believer yourself and then now she brings in someone whom you don't even know, someone who doesn't know about your faith, someone who is just new in each and everything how will you handle that kind of a situation let's look at it here what is it that happened to them let's look at it here in verse 11 on the very same chapter 34 here it reads that and she came and said unto your father unto you let me find grace in your eyes and what you shall say unto me i will give and it goes on to verse 12 says that, ask me never so much dowry and gift and i will give according as you shall say unto me but give me the damsel so this is what happened when we find that now the, the, the father came in to ask for the damsel so that she can get here to be a wife to his son. When we are looking at him here in the book of uh, Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 28 and 29, we read that if a man find a damsel that is a virgin which is not betrothed and lay hold on her and lie with her and they be found, then the men that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father fifty shekels of silver and shall be his wife, because he hath humbled her, he may not put her away all his days. So in here we are looking at um, in the time of Moses, what exactly went to happen if a damsel has to be defiled, what was supposed to take place? 
but in the year we are looking at a very different scenario in which Jacob himself was supposed to do something. But what is it that he did when he saw that this heathen Shechem coming in to take his daughter? Genesis 34 verse 9 and 10. And make he marriages with us and give, your, give us your daughters unto us and take our daughters unto you. And you shall dwell with us and the land shall be before you and dwell and trade ye therein and get you possessions therein. So this is what the father said, that they have to be together, they have to mingle, and they can give their daughters also, and also the sons, they can also even get their daughters too. So they are coming here to make an agreement. And when we are looking at this agreement, now Jacob as a father, he was supposed to do something. But what is that he did? And we have got a warning, there is a warning that God gives against intermarrying with unbelievers. When we look at the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, it says that, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? Verse 15, And what concord hath Christ with Belial? And what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them, and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. It goes on to say, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Verse 18, and I will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Only when we meet God halfway, everything that uh, God he gives us with a condition that for, he, for us to be able to be the sons and daughters of God, we are supposed to be separate from the world. Each and every time God separates his people from the world. When we are looking at the life of Abraham, Abraham was separated from the world. When we are looking at um, people like Elijah, we are looking at people like Moses, God, most of the times, he would separate them from other people so that God should groom them, so that God should teach them. So in this case also, also us, we are called to be separate from the world. Because the world has got a lot of influences. And as all these influences were looking at, we are not supposed to be unequally yoked with the unbelievers. Most of the times we are looking at that, the parents, they always look at that. Maybe in our church, there is no one who is able to get my daughter. There is no one who can meet this standard. So do you think that they can meet the standard outside the day? And at the end, if we do that, there is going to be an outcome which is going to be negative that will impact negatively. How will you handle this kind of a situation? We are looking at that Jacob in this period that he knew that he was not supposed to mingle with other, these other people. He is not supposed to do marriages between him and these other people who are not believers. And what exactly happened after they agreed to, 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 uh, to give each other? So when we look at um, Genesis 34, verse 7 and 13 to 24, how did Jacob's sons propose to solve the predicament? And what was the response? Let's look at the sons. What is it that they proposed to their father? Verse 7 says that, And the sons of Jacob came out of the field when they hate it, and the men were grieved, and they were very wroth because he had a, a wrathful in Israel, in lying with Jacob's daughter, which thing ought not to be done? So we're looking at that the sons as they were coming in. The brothers of Dina, when they are coming in, they hear that their sister has been defiled. And we find that they were very wroth at that period. They weren't happy. They were very wroth in that what had happened. And invested in says that if the sons of Jacob answered Shechem and Hama and his father deceitfully and said, because he had defiled Dina, their sister. And they said unto them, We cannot do this to give our sister to one that is uncircumcised for that way to reproach us unto. So they said that they have to be circumcised. There is no any other way that they can give their sister to an uncircumcised person. 
when we look at Jacob himself, he at first he defiled his, he, he uh, deceived his father and he ran to Laban. And when he was in Laban, he was also deceived. So we are looking at that um, what goes around, it comes around. Now he, is he was deceived by Laban, and now he is also deceived by his sons. Why did he have to listen to the children? And the children, they are saying that if they be circumcised, then they can be able to get dinner. And what is it that they did? When we are looking at uh, these people, um, we find that and Hamma and Shechem his son came unto the gate of their city and communed with the men of their city, saying, "These men are peaceable with us." So they are going in to get these other people and saying that they have to be circumcised. So I learned that almost the entire village they were all circumcised, so that they should have marriages between themselves. And when we went on further. We are looking that they were all circumcised because they were willing that Shechem should get dinner to wife. And in this situation, in nowadays, what we do is we can tell, we can say that the whole village was baptized, but they didn't know what exactly that they were doing. They didn't know about the faith of Jacob. They didn't know about the God of Jacob. They, when they heard, they heard that they are supposed to be circumcised, they just all fell for it, but without knowing what does it entail to be circumcised, and what is it that was expected of them, and how were they supposed to live their lives. So we find that Jacob, at that period, he should have said and make a stand to say, we are like this, this is our faith, but he couldn't say that. And most of the times, what about us? When we meet with our friends who are not Christians, when we meet with our friends who are infidels, who don't believe in God, what is that we share to them? What is that we tell them? Or oh, we are like the other people who hide yourselves who you are. Because if you are hiding yourself, you are looking at that you are supposed to be the light of the world. But if you are not becoming that light, what is it that you are? And we are looking at that we are the salt of the world. But if you are not showing forth, then what about the world out there? If yourself you are in the salt losing its saltiness, we are looking that it is good to be thrown away. And looking at it, let's say you are just eating, you have got your nice dish, you have got uh, prepared yourself a nice meal. But then if you find that it lacks salt, how will it feel? Will you be able to enjoy it? So we are looking at that Jacob at that period. He was supposed to let his light so shine. And also, as for us today, when we meet with the people out there who don't believe in God, when we meet with the people who are not of our faith, whenever they come and then they want to get your daughters or whomsoever they want to, you are supposed to be in a standing point to reveal Christ unto them. But is it that what you do? What is it that you teach to your children? When we go on further, looking at, um, at this, let's... Um, Let's go on further to look at um, what did Jacob realize about the serious flaws in his family management and what ray of hope came to his heart. So we find that what happened is we are looking at that two of his sons, they weren't happy. And what is that they did? When we look at uh, Genesis 34 verse 25 then, it says that, And it came to pass on the third day when they were so that two of the sons of Jacob, Simeon and Levi, Dinah's brethren, took each man his sword and came upon the city boldly and slew all the males. Verse 20 goes on to say that, And they slew Hammer and Shechem his son with the age of the sword and took Dinah out of Shechem's house and went out. So this is what they did. They went on. When we are looking at Dina, because of her, because of her first saying that she wants to go and see the daughters of the land, she was defiled. And after that, we find that now she had married to Shechem. And as a result, the whole entire village, the whole of these males, they were all slew. They were all slain by, um, by these sons of Jacob because of one person. So you can imagine what kind of influence that you, you have. If you do something 
all the consequences they are not going to fall just only for you but the people who are around you they might be affected so you should ask yourself what kind of example do you show to people out there if you love your people you will be able to be in a position to tell the truth and also to not to risk people's lives we find that all these people they had to be slain because of of, of dana so this was a result of dina's mistake and after jacob realized that this had happened what is it that he did because he was thinking that his children they went on and they fought and they took kept they kept uh, they took the wives and they kept it and spoiled even all that was in the house so this is what they did so when we go on further, when Jacob realized this, what is it that he did? Let's read Genesis 34 verse 30. And Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, you have troubled me to make me to stink among the inhabitants of the land, among the Canaanites and per Perizzites. And I being few in number, they shall gather themselves together against me and slay me, and I shall be destroyed, I and my house. So now Jacob, now he is brought into his senses when he is thinking of himself. He is thinking that these people, they will come and revenge themselves because they, um, because these, these children, they have come into this place and uh, slew everyone. They slain everybody. So in this, when he thought of, he thought that the other, the entire village, they are all going to unite, combine themselves and come after him. Verse 35, And God said unto Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel, and dwell there, and make there an altar unto God that appeared unto thee when thou fleedest from the face of Esau thy brother. So this is what God said unto him, that he is supposed to go to another, to Bethel, and to make an altar, to make an altar there. And as we are going towards the, uh, the conclusion, looking at the restoration to God's ways, what is that we get in there? When we look at that, explain the vital step Jacob took in family reformation and the amazing results. Genesis 35, verse 2 to 5, here we read that. Then Jacob said unto his household and to all that were with him, put away the strange gods that are among you and begin and change your garments and let us arise and go up to Bethel and I will make thee an altar unto God who answered me in the day of my distress and was with me in the way which I went. And they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hand and all their earrings which were in their ears and Jacob and Jacob hid and, when, and Jacob hid them under the oak which was by Shechem and they journeyed and the terror of God was upon the cities that were round about them and they did not pursue after the sons of Jacob so now Jacob was released now Jacob had left and as he left now he was um, like these people, they didn't avenge themselves. They didn't come after him. So God um, managed to be with Jacob and with his family that they managed to go. They managed, and as all these things were happening, it is because that uh, Jacob realized the mistake and God said unto him that he is supposed to go to Bethel and did what he was asked him to do. So in each and every time, let's take also an example of Job. What is it that Job did? We are looking at that Job also. Let's look at the Job chapter 1 verse 5. It says that, And it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that... My sons have sinned and kills the God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. Looking at a very wonderful father, looking at Job that he thought that maybe his children might have cursed God. They might have sinned against God. And what is that he did? He went on. What kind of a father are you? What kind of a mother are you? Do you pray for your children? Do you take time to have time with God? Do you have time to, to take your children to God, to present them to God, if maybe they would have done something? So this is what Job did. What kind of a father will you be from today going onwards? Will you also do a, take the example of Job? And how can believers in every age be inspired by the type of flesh 
looking at the new experience Jacob had at Bethel. Let's look at it and say, and Jacob came to lose, which is in the land of Canaan, that is Bethel, he and all the people that were with him. And he built there an altar, and he called the place El Bethel, because there God appeared unto him, where he fled from the face of his brother. So he is also brought up into the very same place in which also he came to this place after he was running away from his brother. So he was also in this place again. And Acts 19 verse 18 to 20 says that, And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and bent them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. So mighty grew the weight of gold and prevailed. So this is what we are getting in here, that in each and every time, as a parent, as a father, as a mother, this is what you should do. Take the example of Jacob. You also have to take the example of Job. Do at the same time, make sure that each and every time you make an effort to take your children to Christ through prayer. We have got an opportunity of prayer. And if we have got this opportunity, we are to take all our parents unto him. When we look at the book of Matthew 11, verse 20, it says that, All with thy labor is every light, and come to me, and I shall set you free. So also Jacob in this period, he was heavy laden. He was thinking that what is going to happen to him and God set him free. So where is it that you put your trust in? If you do put your trust in God, God can still do wonders today as he dealt with Jacob. He is the very same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. May you be blessed and have such a wonderful time when you contemplate uh, with this lesson that we had. May the Lord be with you that you should be a good parent and that you should be a good child and that you should be a good father or a mother. Wherever that you go, you should lead, live an example. Wherever that you go, you should always let your light so shine in the world. Never be discouraged. The life that we are living, it has got challenges. But all with all these challenges, if you trust in the Lord, God can still do wonders today. Be blessed. For the honor and glory of God, we will be singing a song called Altar of God, and it's based off of Psalms chapter 43. joy and my 
my delight I will praise you with all my heart And I will go to the altar of God My song through the night I will praise you with all my heart And I will go to the altar of God My joy and my delight I will praise you with all my heart And I will go to the altar of God My song through the night I will praise you with all my heart All of my heart